name is Eli Davichoni. I'm one of the founders and the chief scientific officer uh, for Decipher. Um, the draft LCD is DL38292. Um, and, um, yeah, and we're in support of the, um, of the LCD. Um, a little bit about the company. Um, we've been around uh, for just over 12 years, um, in, located in San Diego and also Vancouver, Canada. Um, our f we're focused in uh, urologic oncology. Um, right now we have products in prostate and bladder cancer. And what's different about our approach is uh, we use um, a whole transcriptome approach. We're looking at RNA expression. Um, so in, in localized cancer, um, most of the signal, um, the in information that we use is actually coming from measuring RNA expression, not um, DNA mutations. And we leverage uh, probably the world's largest uh, transcriptome database in, in collaboration with the academic research community, we share um, all of this data um, to, to continuously, uh, in an effort to continuously involve this, evolve the space. Um, so why is prostate cancer important? Um, the, um, as our uh, population ages and as we've gotten better at uh, treating cardiovascular disease, um, men are living long enough to die of prostate cancer. And Specifically for Medicare, um, the 90% the of the costs of treating prostate cancer are, um, are when the disease gets to the metastatic state, and 90% of the patients um, that present with, that have metastasis are actually uh, Medicare beneficiaries. Um, so about 80% of the costs of treating prostate cancer in the U.S. Um, falls on all of us. And so we know that uh, diagnosing disease early um, uh, and maybe someday uh, more efforts to preventing uh, prostate cancer from arising in the first place will be important. But right now, actually the, the biggest thing we can do from a society perspective is prevent metastatic onset. Um, so really uh, like most cancers nowadays, it's a risk adapted approach. Um, and all of the, the key uh, decisions facing a patient um, wh when they get diagnosed um, are based on, their, on the perceived risk, um, so really the metastatic potential of the tumor. Um, and we use biomarkers today, um, really PSA, Gleason score, clinical stage. These are somehow measures of the bio biology of the tumor um, to make these decisions. Um, so from a person presenting with actually low risk disease, there's, there's a chance, uh, a good chance that they could actually be um, served by keeping their prostate and, and following that um, and avoid the side effects of radical therapy. Um, but then of course there's also the people that have higher risk disease where we really need to uh, layer in multimodal therapy. And this, in prostate cancer specifically, we're a little bit behind other uh, disease uh, sp specialties, uh, chiefly breast cancer. Um, so uh, really our approach was to see if we could improve on existing clinical risk factors, um, these, um, these biomarkers that have been used um, um, for the for decades, um, and so we collaborated um, in um, uh, about ten years ago with the Mayo Clinic. Uh, they at the time had the largest uh, tumor registry um, f uh, for prostate cancer, and what was uh, unique about their registry was uh, not only they had the available tissue specimens banked, um, but also that they had the very long term um, outcomes data. So to prove that somebody has low-risk prostate cancer and they're not gonna die of their disease, you, you actually, because of the natural history of the disease, you need to follow them for about 20 years. Um, and so Mayo had that and um, we partnered. And what we, what we did is we designed a study where we could sample virtually all of the metastatic cases uh, that, that came through their, their, their institution over about a 20-year period. Um, and compared those to 
very similarly matched controls, so similarly based on clinical factors. Um, we did whole transcriptome analysis and using machine learning um, we came up with a, uh, a model, a prediction model, um, which is now marketed as Decipher, and it uh, looks at multiple genes across uh, multiple pathways that we think are important in, um, in prostate cancer um, uh, development. So the, 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 the test, uh, and this is really what's used clinically, it's low, intermediate, or average, or high risk. Uh, there's a score from zero to one, and, and these risk groups have been uh, established and, and validated across uh, multiple studies now. Um, and I'll show you in a second what it looks like. But before that, um, you know, it's important to show <laughs> that something new that actually does add cost to our system, does improve um, risk stratification, and um, we've been able to show across uh, many studies now um, that Decipher consistently is better than uh, individual risk factors, and actually also combinations of risk factors, um, such as the NCCN risk model or the uh, UCSF uh, CAPRA risk model. Um, and here's an example from a recent um, validation study uh, from the Durham uh, Veterans Administration Hospital. Um, so over about a 20-year period, um, nearly 600 men um, were analyzed. And you can see for the metastasis endpoint, for the prostate cancer-specific mortality endpoint, uh, th this is really what risk stratification is about. Uh, a decipher low risk score, these, these men with very long-term follow-up really don't have events, um, and this is the kind of disease that we can manage um, very adequately with local therapy, with monotherapy approaches, but there's still a lot of work to do for the intermediate and high-risk, um, the intermediate and high-risk men, because there's, there's actually a lot of events, and, um, and these people are probably being under-treated with just uh, surgery or, or radiotherapy alone. Um, so, to get a Decipher score, um, clinicians, you, you, primarily urologists, radiation oncologists, order the test. Um, we get a small sample of tumor tissue, either from the biopsy or from the prostatectomy, extract RNA. Um, all of this is done in a CAPCLIA, um, New York State uh, accredited lab. Um, do our whole transcriptome analysis. All of this is done, obviously, in the cloud, and then produce the score. Um, the decipher biopsy test report, and they look fairly similar. What's different is the interpretation boxes, um, and um, but you get this risk, these risk groups, and then also these probabilities of, of events, of, of clinical events happening. Um, uh, this this test has been uh, extensively studied in the medical literature, and um, uh, ha is. Uh, now in most of the um, prospective NCI-funded trials it's being used. Um, so that's this slide, and, and we think many more, hopefully, um, uh, studies will be um, using Decipher. Um, so it's become quite popular. Um, physicians have gotten comfortable using this information. Um, so over nearly, um, over 2,500 have ordered the test. And it's been used, uh, I think, for more than um, more than seventy thousand patients at this point. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's the the LCD covers multiple decision points um, where uh, prognostic information is crucial to to making the right treatment decision, um, and this is uh, reflected in the NCCN guidelines as well, and. Um, yeah, uh, we have uh, are in support of the draft LCD. We have um, some minor changes that we will submit in the, in the comment period. Thank you.